Hey, you there, YouTubers. This is Kevin from The Bat Productions. And today we're going to talk about episode two of House of the Dragon, which obviously is being talked about all over the world right now, as House of the Dragon is absolutely smashing the viewer numbers right now, according to HBO Max, which I'm really thrilled about because, you know, obviously as someone who's a fan of Game of Thrones and Fire and Blood, I also create content about it as well. It's a really great time to be able to absorb more of it and also to be able to talk about a lot of it with the rest of you nerds out there. Now I'm going to be talking to the events up until episode two of House of the Dragon. So if you haven't seen episode two of House of the Dragon, obviously they're going to be spoilers ahead because I'm going to be diving into one of the most important things that happened in the episode. Now this video is all about why King Viserys ended up choosing Alicent Hightower as his next wife. Now, of course, his wife had died, Queen Emma, in episode one, and he's been urged by his council and everyone around him, essentially, that he needs to get a new wife. And he ended up choosing Alicent Hightower, despite earlier on in the episode, being given a pretty generous offer by Corlys Valerion and Rhaenys Targaryen to marry to the daughter, Lena Valerion. Smart match, makes a lot of sense, but ultimately, King Viserys ended up going with the Hightowers in this situation. What really ended up tipping the scales from Lena, who makes a ton of sense, which I'll go over in a second, versus Alison Hightower, who was kind of like a horse that was in third or fourth place and ended up just rearing right ahead. First, I want to talk about his choices. The two that I just mentioned, we had Lena Valerion, which a 12-year-old girl that belongs to the House of Valerion. They have the most money in all of Westeros. They're ancestrally linked to the Targaryens. You know how the Targaryens are really into the idea of keeping the blood pretty pure if they possibly can. But the only downside is she's 12 years old, but they already they negotiated it. They'd be able to do some sexy stuff if she grows up in about two or three years. So they had that squared away. Then you have Alison Hightower, who is about somewhere between the 15 and 17 year old range. Also his daughter's absolute best friend in the world and potentially her future lover. Her father is the Hand of the King and one of King Viserys' most trusted confidants. And Alison Hightower had been visiting him in bed repeatedly, not having sexy time, but had been visiting him in the bedchambers, checking out his stupid models and stuff of old Valyria. And then as for his other options, we don't really know what his other options were because they didn't really do much of a thorough search past those two people. Really, Lena was the only one that was put on the table. Otto did some shadowy work behind the scenes in order to shove Alison Hightower into the picture. We actually did more work assembling the last member of the Kingsguard than trying to find a bride for King Viserys. It's actually pretty gross. In many ways, maybe it's because Lena was such a slam dunk that obviously he should have married Lena. Now, truly, how did Allison end up winning? So first, obviously her age. Because she's between 15 to 17 years old, she's got a lot of childbearing years. And as episode one showed, having a future heir is very important to King Viserys. So he's trying to still aim for that goal. I think he would rather actually not have another wife, but unfortunately that's his duty. Although coincidentally, in the end, I think he ended up making a decision that was not smart strategically and instead ended up choosing someone that was more emotionally connected to himself in a really kind of weird, perverse way. And coincidentally, I think actually the relationship between Alison Hightower and Rhaenyra is exactly why Viserys had chosen Alison instead. You would think that's a reason to stay apart. Instead, my hypothesis as to why this went down is, you know, obviously after Queen Aima had died, King Viserys was very sad. Now he grieved in his way. Rhaenyra grieved in her own way. She grieved fairly solely, and I think King Viserys wanted a little bit of companionship in that regard. Now, Otto Hightower, doing his little Littlefinger stuff, in the shadows, he said, you know what, how about you go visit the king and you wear your mother's old dresses? Clearly, that was an intentional strategic move in order to move Alison Hightower into the good graces of a grieving King Viserys, who was not getting the attention of his own daughter when they were trying to get over the loss of not only the wife, but also her brother slash his son. Alison ended up filling this like daughter hole in King Viserys' life that Rhaenyra wasn't at the time. Rhaenyra had different priorities. She's the heir. She's going to have a tougher exterior just to prove that as a woman, she can be the future heir to the Iron Throne. So she was kind of grieving in her own kind of solitude type of way. And King Viserys was doing it in a totally different way. And Alicent was shoved into the picture and she was hyping him up so much, talking about how great he is and really tending to his needs emotionally. Whereas Rhaenyra wasn't doing that, wasn't being a part of the family and grieving with King Viserys after such terrible losses. So when all the cards were on the table and everyone's telling King Viserys that Lena is clearly the smart choice, 
he was a little creeped out by the age. Clearly, they pretty much showed that. And through today's lens in 2022, I'm pretty stoked that he was creeped out by it. But it seems very clear that he ended up choosing Alison Hightower not for strategy, but instead because in a really weird way, she kind of filled the hole within his family that Rainier wasn't doing anymore. So in a way, he's doing it to be closer to his daughter, but it's probably going to drive a wedge the complete opposite direction because no matter what happens, no matter what Allison's intentions are and what King Viserys' intentions are, if they have children, that means that any heir, any male heir, is going to be direct competition to Rhaenyra, King Viserys' now named heir. And she's a woman, if it ends up being a male heir, which we know from the trailer, it is a reality that Rhaenyra will have competition to the Iron Throne. Do you remember how it went in Game of Thrones when Daenerys and Jon Snow had competition, even though Jon didn't want the throne? Yeah, it got ugly. And take a guess at what probably is going to happen if you're watching the show. So King Viserys made a, a ridiculous, ridiculous decision. Do you think they're going to be friends anymore at this point? No. So King Viserys made the worst decision possible. And you know what's actually just like a little extra, little bit of razzle-dazzle into the situation? Maybe King Viserys' mind would have been a little bit clearer if Daemon was actually on his side and he was not freaking out, going to Dragon soon, stealing it, taking eggs, and ficing off against Rhaenyra. Like, maybe if Daemon was on his side, he'd be thinking a little more clearly. But no, no, Daemon's making things more complicated for Viserys, who clearly does not make a good strategic decision, and instead he led with his emotions. I give Viserys, like, the smallest morsel of credit because he did not do it for a sexual reason. Like, Robert Baratheon would have ended up doing it for a sexual reason eventually. But King Viserys, he did it because he just, he needed his, his hole filled, his daughter hole. That's the way I see it, at least. I know it's weird, I know it's creepy, but let's be honest, there's nothing really clean about this situation. But that's what I think. What do you think about why King Viserys ended up marrying Alison Hightower as opposed to someone like Lena Valerion? There's a lot of other women in the realm could have gone that direction. Let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you as a viewer of the House of the Dragon TV series. Also, if you really enjoy this television show, it was based on a book called Fire and Blood. I'm doing a narration of all the book, all of it entirely. I'm up to chapter 19. I'm working on chapter 20, and there's only three left after that. So it should be really exciting. If you want to listen to that, give this playlist a view, and also hit the subscribe button. We're on our race to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the House of the Dragon series, and I think we're going to do it. The end of season one, we're going to get there, folks. All you need is your support, and we're going to do it. Also, as a fun giveaway, I'm giving away this Kyle Drogo Funko Pop figure. Right now, I have a winner who's going to get it this go-around, and this is Devin Cross. Devin Cross, if you are in the U.S., send me an email at thebatproductions at gmail.com, and I will gladly send this Kyle Drogo Funko Pop figure to you because it is a glorious piece of memorabilia from Game of Thrones that you need in your collection. Otherwise, that's going to do it. Hope you have an amazing day, everybody. You take care, and goodbye.